the live and um, we're on the webcast, okay. So good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to the planning committee. My name is Steve Bowes, I'm chair of the planning committee. And just for courtesy sake, we have a very well time. Could we have our mobiles turned off or on the silent please? Um, just to advise you that we will be webcasting this evening and the record will be retained on the council website. Our cameras are set so they will follow the mics. Um, so uh, if you do press your mic on, uh, if you do want to speak, make sure the mic is on. Uh, my role is to ensure the committee is run smoothly, have regards to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain to the rest of the people uh, on the committee are, to my immediate advice to the council solicitor, who will give advice on legal matters, and our minute takers and webcasters are here. On my left are the council planning officers, the highways engineer and the environmental health officer who will be asked possibly for advice on those particular matters of a technical nature. The rest of the people down both sides of the uh, tables are the elected members who will consider the applications and it's those members who will make the decisions uh, by, by a vote and that will be by a show of hands. Before each application is discussed, there will be a short presentation from planning officers. And in the event of a qualifying petition of 25 or more uh, signatures, one representative will be invited to address the committee. And that will be for up to five minutes. And I will let them know when they have uh, a minute to go. If a petition addresses the committee, then the applicant uh, or their agent will be invited to make representation to the committee in support of their application and same rules apply for five minutes with a minute's warning. However, if the petitioner does not address the committee, the applicant does not, will not be invited to speak. A ward councillor can speak to the committee on behalf of residents, uh, but once they return to the public arena, they cannot take up any part in the debate. It is only the committee members who, who can speak and uh, uh, advise group of officers. And the board councillor can speak as long as they like. <laughs> the application will then be open for debate and discussion by members. The order of tonight's agenda will be very, uh, very subject to members agreeing, so we can accommodate those members of the public who are here who don't have to stay right through the whole agenda. If a site visit is requested and approved by committee, this matter will not be discussed any further this evening and will be discussed at a future meeting of the planning committee. Members of the public who are here for that application may leave if they wish or can say spend the evening with us. Okay, I have to go through that every single time. There's the rules. So, I now go into the uh, agenda proper. Um, and the first one is the minutes. Can the minutes be agreed and approved? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Now, we have a member's code of conduct. And um, this is asking people to declare if they have any interest in any of the items on the agenda. David Ellison. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I declare interest on item 9, I think it is, I just refer to what's there. Sands, Hay, Road, Mel. Uh, I know the applicant very well, but they're wrong for me to get involved in a debate. Okay. Any other declaration? Any other declarations of interest? Okay, and now we move on to the next item, which is the uh, recommendation for site visits. Are there any requests for site visits? I've got Kath. Uh, yes, through you, Chair. I've um, had to request a site visit for application 18 stroke 01234, Little London's 43 Farpole Drive, Hessel. Um, I've had to request it on the basis that there are over 100 signatures on the petition, but it's a very contentious application and that there are some new applicants on the uh, committee and I think it would be um, preferential and um, I think it would be ideal if the committee members could go and visit the area and see the site of the city. Thank you, Jen. Okay, so that was item six, yes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any other requests for site visits? Yeah. Yes, it's item 10. Yes, uh, item 10, Chair, uh, application. Thank you. 
participation in the one ago, and uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the prospect of uh, accessible uh, other okay. so, for other services for the seven. So, just for the record, item six. Sorry. Oh, are all members agree with that? Yes. I agree with that. Just think if we don't cycle. Okay, so for the record, anyone here for item six, Little London's 43 Far Hill Drive? Uh, it's been a wasted uh, journey, I'm afraid. We will arrive on site and you'll be informed when our site visit is. Likewise, anyone here for the baking shop at 15 Wilton Road, Seacom, item seven? That will not be here tonight. And similarly, 52 Eating Bar, Thoughts and Bulls, the direction of the single story, the extension, will not be here tonight. So, uh, apologies for bringing you out, but it wasn't too bad of you. You're welcome to stay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the comedian says we're here for a fortnight. Okay. Thanks, Chair. <laughs> okay, yeah. I do apologise. Uh, I've been informed now that item 12, form of virtual house playing fields, the application will not be here tonight. Okay. So that's. Sorry. Item 12, former Bairnshaw House School playing fields have been referred to enable the planning department to receive and assess a consultation response for one of the yeah, statutory consultees. And that's so it will not be there tonight. Okay? So that brings the agenda down somewhat. Excuse me. And as a petitioner, can I request a site visit for one of these? No, I'm too late now, the site visits have already been um, Members of the public call to request yeah. time to yeah. send any members of the committee. It's already, that, that's already passed, that's fine. Okay, so we've dealt with that. So, looking at the list, there are no particular members of the public in any way from this. Well, okay. I'll be one of the items. Just check what items are here for them.
that on board? Councillor, okay, want to speak on it? No? Okay, I'll open it up to members. David? <coughs> yes, thank you, Chair. And just drawing attention to the top of page 16, where it talks about representation. There have been no objections to the development itself, just one objection uh, relating to the fact that the development had already been begun without planning consent. For the benefit of the audience, uh, Indeed, of course, <coughs> people can commence developments without finding them, but it's at their risk, they all have the risk that it be, it's instructed to be taken down and the reporting proceeding at some stage in the future. But the question is, there has been no objection to this particular development. I'm not seeing any other indications. Can I then, therefore, as chair, move approval? Have I second that? Seconded. Seconded. Okay, is that moved that approved? Screen, uh, all in favor, please share. Any uh, against? Any abstentions? Okay, so that's unanimously approved. Moving on then to uh, item five, which is uh, vacant land in Grassford Road for change. Yeah. 
Who's good for that? Who was in for them? Okay. But the normal notification is about to be there. Alright, okay. So, if you can give your name and address and then speak to five for five minutes, uh, that'd be great, okay? Thank you. Any little put on the middle? <coughs>
URL can solicit with respect to Tim, with respect to, I just want help, we are asking for help. We don't really want this to go ahead. We understand the pressure of houses. Of course, we want to work with the level to develop this, but develop it in the right way. And, and the people that are there get, get you know, a bit of ease, as in parking, as in access, as in stuff that this is all got. Sorry if I've got on. No, no, no. I want to get the point across, so I don't know where I've got across. I'll give you leeway, I'll give you a few minutes warning, you know, get a little bit out of the book, because we've talked a while, so I'll give you minutes warning, so the anything you finally want to conclude with then. There's, there's 53 people on the petition. This came to us in August, that was going on holiday, we worked very hard. We all worked very hard. Um, there was another petition put in, but it was given to someone that wasn't, I mean, we're quite late. There's a lot, a lot more people that are, you know, less late than us, let's say. And it was given to them, it was put in, they didn't get a receipt. So there's a lot more petitions. What we don't want to do is go to who are, have papers, the telly there, have people upset, have, have our residents upset, and making a point through the media. We just want to talk to you, your council. We just want to help in developing our communities. Just go bang, 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 bang. It's going to make the whole system go bang. Okay. It's been time for a long time. Thank you for listening to me. I don't okay. know if I've been across in the right place or anything. Okay, so thanks. Cheers. Thanks for coming along. If you just turn your mic off with the middle book, that'd be great for us. You, you, you were okay with being on webcam as well, were you? Because you were there. It's all lives. I don't know what it's you're all lives. That's all lives. Yeah, it's okay. Of course. That's okay. No, because you came late, you didn't hear the, the pre warning about the webcam casters and all that. Okay, thanks. If you can take two seconds. We're just looking for yeah. the agenda. Okay. That's all right. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, we have heard the object. This is the applicant here. They have the right to reply now that the objectives have spoken. Okay, is there a ward councillor for up to the present? No? Okay, so it's now open to committee. Uh, members want to make comments, I've got a few things to say towards the end of everyone else has, but everyone else. Brian? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, obviously, I've read all the paperwork and I've listened very carefully. So what the uh, objector said, the problem is, as a planning committee, we can only make a decision on this application, as with any other application, on the grounds of planning rules, and there's nothing in here, and I haven't heard anything with respect, that would give me any reason why this application should be refused on planning grounds. In fact, if you look at some of the relevant details, uh, various people have been consulted, the head of environment and regulation, Environmental Protection, Housing Strategy, Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service, United Utilities, etc. None of them have got any objection. I was told that there was a, a problem with flooding, but apparently even the, the, the lead local flood authority have raised no objections. So I'm, I'm searching to find any reason why this committee would not approve the application. But I would ask one question, Chair. I think the, the petitioner said that there were <coughs> more petitions so can I just ask through you, Chair, the officers, as I understand that we've had one petition of uh, 52 signatures, were any other petitions received from any other source? Thank you, Chair. It, it clearly, clearly, finally is a complicated issue, and um, I, will, I will say this uh, on public record. One of the main jobs of locally elected members is to navigate their residents through um, the process. Now, I know there's an objection come in from Councillor G. Robinson. Um, I'm not going to make criticism of the wall councillors. You may not have contacted them or gone to the surgery, but clearly, if you're ever in this position again, your first board to call, I would suggest, because we're a democratic society, is your locally elected board member, and then they will have knowledge of the planning system. So at least you, you will be able to navigate what is a complicated system. Council Kenny is quite right. This committee can only deal with what is before it. And in terms of our planning policies, it fits the bill. In terms of you know, regeneration and providing housing for newer families onto the, the estate, it, it may have a positive effect, aspect rather than a negative. There was one letter of support for the application complaining about flight tipping and stuff going on the field, which, which I believe was fenced off and not particularly well used. I think your sentiments are it could have been used for something else or could have been something for the community or the player or something 
that's not what's before the committee tonight. So I do, um, I do sympathise with your sort of, you know, the issue you find yourself in because before I become a councillor, the planning committee was a bit of a mystery to me as well. So yeah, in that situation again, I suggest fair protocols, your local board councillors, get, you know, become organised and then present to the committee a, a reasonable <coughs> planning argument. Many of the arguments that you put forward weren't actually planning reasons, we just, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of a, a bit of a wish list that I think we can be yeah, credible to you to say that. So, so that, that's where we find ourselves uh, as a committee that we have this application. <coughs> Clarify the position on the petition to we've only received the one of 52 names. That that is is oh it's on our file. You need to find out where but that petition may be sitting or something. Then downstairs. Well it wasn't handed into this side, it was handed into the front side. Right. It's, it's, it's not on the latest, list, I can show you with that. Yeah. Anyway, you you you've had to say you you have made a contribution, it, it is open to us. Are any members believe that there's any credible reasons to refuse all that to move? Okay. In the absence of that, then uh, I'll say, uh, yeah. subject to the 106 agreements about the affordability issue, it meets that criteria. Uh, I agree with you, say I wish it was 100% social housing. Uh, it isn't, uh, but that's not something we can dictate to the applicants. Um, so, in the absence of that, with the section 106 agreement, I will move approval. Have we got a second there? So that's seconded. All those in favour of approval? And those against? Any abstentions? Okay, everybody will abstain. So, that application has been approved, sir. Um, thanks for coming along and making a contribution. Sorry, I know you're all busy and all of that, but you know, it, wasn't, it, wasn't about, uh, it wasn't about a wish list. We were just asking, we knew this was going to happen. If the developer, is this limited, this? The developer could just work alongside the community. Yeah, the, the, yes. the, minute, the minutes are will only be a, a very. If you see the previous minutes, they're a very. They're not. They don't go into the sort of detail you wish. The webcam is there. There's absolutely no reason why, from the information on, on the agenda, you write to the developer to actually ask him to come and work and engage. I would always encourage developers to engage pre-application, and if they continue to do their job properly. Uh, engage post application. So I would say give you advice to write to the development and see if you can work with them as opposed to anything else. Is that, that's the only advice I can give. But we don't have a debate across, across the floor. No, of course. Okay. So, so we are going to move to the next item. Thank you for your time. This is today. Thank you. Which is. That's <laughs> mate. Ice mate is Fisher's Lane, Pensby. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. This application is referred to the Planning Committee because there is a qualifying petition and 10 letters of objection. Councillor Whitehall has also expressed support for, for the latest concerns. The application site comprises of an area of open grassland that was a very good <coughs> field of the former Kensby Primary School, Kensby Park Primary School. The building is now occupied as a children's centre. The application site is designated as a school playing field within the Lord's Unit Development Plan. The criteria for protecting school playing fields was contained in Unit Development Plan Policy RE7. However, this did not remain in force following a decision by the Secretary of State, so the loss of the playing field is therefore to be assessed against the National Planning Policy Framework. Paragraph 97 states that the playing field should not be built upon unless an assessment has been undertaken that shows that the land is service requirements for the loss of the place there for the or for better provision. The applicant has cited the um, past and current, current assessments and notes that the site was last used as a playing field in 2008 when the school closed and has not been used since then. Public access to the site is restricted. In addition, the applicant has submitted a copy of the Council's assessment asset management application to the Secretary of State to dispose of this playing field. Which indicates the intention is to invest the proceeds of the sale of the site into contributions towards the improvements of other school playing fields uh, in the area. It's therefore considered that the loss of the form paying pay field in this instance is acceptable. In relation to the proposed development, this application is 100% affordable housing, comprising a direction of 30 seven attached two storey dwellings and five bungalows. The development is laid out in an L shape, with the majority of the development behind the children's centre. But access to the site can be fish's lane. 
It melts in time. The poster is the poster of traditional house type and the effect character of the sound surrounding the area. There'll be an objection to the, to the application based on the proposal to have to keep in mind the numbers, loss of privacy and loss of light, and increased congestion. In terms of the first point, the majority of dwellings that found the site are bungalows. Nevertheless, the designs of the design of properties and the mix of the house types, specifically um, on a scale and design which relates well to the surrounding properties, will not present this result in a detrimental change in the character of the area. In relation, relation to um, the, the um, objections in terms of loss of light and loss of privacy, the majority of the dwellings are not less than 22 metres from the main main faces of the adjacent bungalows. This will ensure that the proposal meets the required interface distance and will not result in overlooking or loss of light to the surrounding properties. There are no objections on the primary grounds, so it's for these reasons the application is recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions and the slight amendment and description to approve 100% of the housing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you and moving on, we've got a petition of um, objection and a qualified petition. Is one of the objectors wish to speak to the health committee uh, to the committee? I'll take that as a no. Does um, <coughs> a ward councillor wish to speak on behalf of the application yet? Yeah, that's the right one. Take your seat. You have unlimited time, sir. That's why I So, regarding the, um, the loss of privacy, 
I want to talk um, specifically about the bungalows on Copeland Close, which are going to be backed onto by a series of two-storey uh, houses. Now, they meet the separation distances, which is fantastic. Um, however, there still will be a deal of oversight onto the bungalows, which is cheaply inhabited by pensioners. They're quite concerned about this, and what I've asked of committee is that you either impose some type of frosting on the uh, windows, or you do, some, you do something else with the landscaping uh, to, to enable there to be trees or something else to obscure the view from the top windows into the back of the bungalows. Whether or not you can do that, I don't know. I leave that to the committee. I understand that you can't frost all of the uh, windows because under plan guidance, which chiefly regards extensions, which is very new development, thank you Joe, um, you actually do need to have a decent view from these, these windows. However, I think you can possibly get around this by putting a condition on the landscaping to have some type of bush or vegetation that will allow some of these windows. Next, talking about congestion. I know some of you in this room are familiar with Fisher's Lane. It's quite a long, narrow route. It's also not entirely straight, it's a slight bend, which means even at the top, if one of the bushes, which is usually quite well kept, grows out just a few feet, it actually makes it near impossible to see down the length of the road. This is relevant, comes to Ken, let me show you. So, when you come out, the exit and ingress onto this site into Fisher's Lane, if you have cars parking, if you do not condition so you have yellow lines or single lines along that entrance, if any car parks there, it'll be near impossible to see down the lane. This is something I know that a lot of roads deal with, but I'm chiefly concerned about it here because it is quite a long road. I can't get any speed restrictions on it because it's used by emergency services, and it's it's next to a well-used park and on the other side a well-used children centre. If anyone is going to be knocked over here, anywhere, it's going to be here and it's probably going to be children. So I really want that taken into consideration. Single or yellow lines. And I understand that's covered on the HS4 free. And I should add too that you can potentially get up to 70 cars in this uh, development. And whilst highways may think that's not significant onto the road, it will be significant onto the road during periods of the day, in the mornings and the evenings, and that probably will be sufficient to cause some type of problem here. In conclusion, Planning Committee. I just want to highlight the oversight, the group to consider some type of condition to address that, and also the uh, trafficking onto the road. That said, however, I'm not asking you to consider refusing this. I think if anything was going to be developed on this field, and it was only a matter of time until it did take place, this is probably a good example of what should be done. Thank you. Okay, you turn your mic off for us, Phil. That'd be great stuff. Okay. So I'm going to bring uh, Matt Marks and Joe back in uh, just to respond to all of them. Thank you, Chair. Um, all the interface distances, why the distances are met, which you can, and they're, they're nearly yeah. under the 20 metres, um, up to 25 metres. And this interface distance is to, is to include um, the roof and the loss of light in the air. So it meets that interface distance. Joe, can I ask the officer to speak into the mic? Sorry. I can speak into my digital down at this end of the room to hear people. I struggled with the last uh, two of speaking just kept on moving away from the mic. It is difficult to pick up what people are saying. Sorry, I was just sat. That's you better. Know? That's good. <coughs> now, in terms of conditions for school days and windows, um, future occupiers should have a reasonable outlook. So, to ensure of glazed, made pegs and windows would not be acceptable to the local authority. Obviously, bathrooms would then there will be a two of days there. The proposal does include first a two metre high fence between um, existing and proposed properties. So, there is that. In terms of landscaping, it would be very difficult to insist that um, trees or shrubbery should be kept at a certain height. Okay, I'm going to open it up to members. Uh, anybody want to make a contribution? I was going to ask the highways engineer to talk about the issues and the number of vehicle movements you may expect. Three, Jim. 
Um, there are no specific capacity issues um, on Fitchers Lane. Um, based on the, the number of dwellings I've proposed, um, it's anticipated that the increase in the level of uh, traffic generated by the proposed development will not result uh, in the detrimental impact on the operation of the, of the local library network. Um, can be accommodated without resulting um, in any network, uh, sort of peak power network issues. In terms of the, uh, the visibility and the proposed access, uh, the proposed access is 5.5 metres wide, it's designed to tickle uh, the residential standards and provides visibility displays which accord with visibility requirements set out the guidance. Um, it is accepted that occasional uh, parking occurs on the, the northern side of the issues lane opposite the access, uh, which is typical for roads of this nature. Uh, however, this will not impact on the safe operation of the access given uh, the, uh, the levels of visibility required. Again, the test of conditions is that they are reasonable. Um, would it be considered reasonable in, in highways and engineering terms for an agreement between the developer and the council for the yellow lines or whatever it was suggested? Or would it be unreasonable given the, the evidence you presented to us? One of the difficulties in providing restrictions in this area is that we obviously take away available parking for, for existing residents, so it's likely to be met by a strong objection uh, if we went down that full sort of consultation process on such a proposal. Okay, quite. Well, I think we've heard um, very well eloquently put by the, the, the councillor, the Bible. Uh, I've been around the area, it's been delivering leaflets for you. Um, so, uh, and I know, know well, to me, I think, given previous applications we've had, this is, is something we've all been sort of aiming for, 100% social housing in the area of need, uh, and I think that is something to be welcomed. And the use of the uh, money going to other facilities in the area in terms of playing fields sounds a very reasonable and an equitable way of doing things. And it does sound as though the developer has engaged uh, with the community, as you would expect from uh, uh, such an organisation. Um, my view would be to advise if it is that the highways issue be pursued post development and uh, see, see the situation is and, and engage with, with, the, um, with the developer and the community and see if, if, if something can be done in the future. But my view is that it's a very reasonable application and a much needed uh, contribution to social housing on the middle. So, my two better than anyone else. Tony? Yes, thanks, Chair. I'm going to approve. Okay. Is seconded. Okay. Seconded by Rob. Okay. All those in favour, please show. Any against? Any abstentions? No, that's been approved unanimously. Okay. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> see you again. Okay, number nine is number nine is Sandhay Road. Um, okay, yes. Oh, this is yours. Okay, yeah. Give me exactly five seconds to get out. Yeah, I'm sorry until uh, until the uh, the applicants uh, made the meeting. I wasn't aware it was the same person.